So today in the shop, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, on the new pump that we've got here, uh, I shouldn't even call it new, it's a fresh rebuild, I guess. You can tell whoever rebuilt this pump really liked their RTV. Uh, there is RTV all over this thing. And what I'm really nervous about is that I'm seeing RTV kind of coming out from underneath the head here. I'm hoping that it just oozed up from the uh, cover for your fuel shutoff. Because this pump is not in a truck, uh, the only way I can turn this pump over is I'm going to have to turn the uh, actual crankshaft for this pump. If you look underneath this cover, you will see kind of that direction. There's a little score on that disc, and I'm going to try and turn it this way. Sorry for the shakiness, and then you see a pointer sticking down. Those are some of the timing marks for this pump. One key thing to remember is when you're replacing the O-rings in the hydraulic head, it can only go in and come out in one position. Um, the gear, sorry. This gear rides on the bottom side of the hydraulic head. And as it comes around, this gear, being a uh, stock Ambeck gear, has this red tooth, which also has a score mark in it. If you're replacing your head with one of the Chinese heads, you may not have that, uh, that red tooth. It may be red. It may just be scored. I've even seen some of them that are white. Uh, it doesn't matter. The main thing is this tooth will line up with a pointer under this cover, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, and that pointer will either line up perfectly with this tooth or right in the valley here, forward or aft. And that is the only position that this head can come in or out. When you're replacing the O-rings, it is very important, or even if you're replacing the head, it's very important to remember where that pointer was in relation to this tooth. Was it in the forward valley, the rear valley, or right on the tooth? That is the exact position that this head must go back in, or the replacement head must go right back in that position. You can pull the head off and spin the thing around all you want. doesn't matter. It will only go in or out in that position, so you need to make sure that it goes back into that correct position because you could be off by that valley putting it in the wrong valley and now the timing of your head is off so we're gonna go ahead um, I'm gonna remove this cover I'm gonna remove there's these four bolts and or nuts and these four caps and then the head should come out as long as I'm lined up here uh, but what I'll do is I'll go ahead and pull this cover off first before I pull these off and come back in with the camera and see what we can't get uh, for lining up that tooth, okay? We took the cover off. Uh, under this cover, there's a plunger. And all that that does is as you slide it back with your uh, shutoff cable, your fuel shutoff cable, it kind of catches down in here and pulls this little lever back and if you recall from the video of rebuilding the head, that little um, square plug that's in there, it just slides up or down on the plunger, and that's what shuts your fuel off. This piece right here is very important. When you put these two screws back in, before you run the safety wire, because you're putting a brand new O-ring in here, you need to make sure that this is fully functional. When you push it one way or the other, it has to flop back on its own. What I suggest to people is you put these screws in a quarter turn at a time and make sure that it still does this. If you don't, one of two things is going to happen. Either your truck, when you get it started, is just going to race right up until you blow the motor up, or if it's pushed back and doesn't return, your truck won't even start, won't even run. So if it moves forward at all, any little bit, truck will race, back the truck will shut off. So keep that in mind. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, cut the safety wire, remove these two screws from the bridge, slide this out. Right in here, hopefully you can see this clip, there it is. We'll pop this clip off, the bridge will come off, 
this whole assembly right here is one assembly then will come out be very careful there's a uh, little clip on the end that's just held in with a pin and then that's one of our o-rings now one thing i want to point out is you can see all of this rtv on the gasket please don't use rtv in here there's no need for it your gasket does all the work uh, like i say whoever it was that rebuilt this pump was just rtv happy save yourself the hassle don't do it out notice how everything here moves nice and free but i want to point out again look at all that rtv all over this part um that's a big reason why not to use this stuff the gasket is just fine but right here is one of our o-rings this here is the small o-ring in your kit that gets replaced this little clip right here that is just held in there with a pin it spins around real easy and it will fall out so you need to be cautious of that don't lose it that's actually what shuts your fuel off so we're going to go ahead and set that off to the side and we're going to take a look down in okay now remember when this is in the truck it's actually leaning towards you all right, so you, if you were looking at it straight, it would be a little bit more angled like this. What I found is easiest is to remove the fender. Uh, that will give you plenty of room to work on this. But in this case, we're doing it in a vise. So right there is our little pointer. And I see no tooth. I'm trying to get that out of the way. I am not seeing the tooth yet that we are looking for. Uh, and again, I'm looking through a camera. So I am going to go ahead now and look for that tooth. And because this one is on the bench, I'm going to have to get a nut on the end here to turn the shaft over to get things lined up. When you're doing it, uh, personally, I have only bumped them over with the starter. Make sure you unplug the fuel pump, otherwise you'll have fuel spraying everywhere. Other people have done it by hand. Uh, gotten underneath and used the jack shaft to turn it over by hand. It's all up to you, your matter of preference. But because it's on the bench, I'm going to go ahead and use the shaft right now. And I'll be back when I get it lined up. Okay, you can see the tooth. It's covered in oil, but it's just to the right of the little white pointer. Sorry, I'm trying to hold the camera and a flashlight uh, here separately. But... Now, you see where it is in relation to that pointer? Now we're going to look down here where the timing mark is. You can see the pointer, barely. And if you were to go to the left of the pointer, there's a timing mark about a half an inch away. Well, as you rotate the shaft, so that timing mark lines up with that pointer, your red tooth now is out of view. So... When somebody's telling you to line that up, they're wrong. So again, directions can be bad. So very key, when you pull this head out, this head should come right out now. Sorry for the poor focus. This head should come right out now without an issue. And as long as I don't move this pump in any direction, it will go right back in once I have the new O-rings on. Okay. I got all the bolts out, or off the nuts off, and this one cap right here is getting stuck when I try and lift it up uh, on the plug here. We're not even going to worry about it. Now there's spring pressure under here because of the plunger. That's why this gets pushed up like it did. Just a couple of wobbles, maybe a little twist or two, and this head will come right out. Okay, you see it's coming out right now. Do not start putting screwdrivers or pry bars or anything under here to pry this out if you do the head's not in the right position all right as long as it is popped up like this like it has it will come out the rest of the way so again verify your position of your tooth we know that the pointer is in the valley just in front of the uh, scored red tooth and there we go, I got that cap off now. Alright, a couple of wobbles, and look at there, that head comes right off. Now you can see that red tooth all the more. 
Now if I was to spin this head all around, which, yay, there I go, I did it, oh boy, this head will not go back in. No matter how much I try and force it, it's not going back in. So keep that in mind, that head will only come in and out if that tooth is lined up correctly with the pointer. Alright, now it's out. So with it being out, we want to inspect our button, make sure our button is there and in good condition. We want to inspect the clip here, make sure that's in good condition. Down inside, make sure that there is no parts or pieces laying down in there, which I suspect there wouldn't be considering this was a fresh rebuild. Now you're going to have a total of three O-rings. We already saw the small one. Then you're going to have a medium-sized O-ring here and a larger O-ring here. These two are what really kind of uh, block oil and fuel from mixing together. So it's nine times out of ten, one of these here that went bad. Those get thrown out. Never reuse your O-rings, even if you're replacing the head. Uh, do not use the same O-rings. Make sure you get new O-rings. Hopefully the person selling you the head is supplying you with O-rings. If they don't, that's another key thing to stay away. So there we go. I'm going to get one of my O-ring kits now. Put the O-rings back on here. Drop it back in place after I get the tooth in the right spot. There we go. Uh, it's actually 180 degrees out. So there it is. Now it'll drop right back in place. Hope that, uh, I really do hope that this video helps you, even though it's completely and utterly out of focus. And handheld, so I know it's horrible, but at least you get the general idea. This is what, uh, what you would get in the O-ring kit. You're going to get a large O-ring mid-size we'll call it, and the small o-ring. Two large o-rings of course go on the head, one right in here and one right in here, the larger one down here, the mid-size here, and then that small one goes on the shaft that would go into this hole here. Uh, as I stated earlier, you want to make sure that this gets these two screws here tightened down just a little bit at a time, ensuring that the shaft here is able to move and return itself without issue.